children, the new luxury item you either have to be a little bit crazy or rich to have. What is up everyone, it's Kelsey with Diary of the Child Free, and today's discussion comes suggested from a fellow YouTube subscriber. It's something we are all generally aware of, especially considering its recent exposure to mainstream media. And that's the current issue of skyrocketing childcare costs, and many of the problems that it's related to. The majority of us may already know those who struggle with this, or perhaps you are a parent watching this who is struggling and at their wit's end with it all. While these sort of situations can make those who are child free a little bit thankful, to avoid having to deal with these sort of issues. It's also hard not to feel some aspect of sympathy for struggling parents who are facing this dilemma and are being taken advantage of by greedy companies, or even those who eventually want to have children but have no other choice but to put everything on hold, and even forego having children entirely because of these obscene costs. If you have been paying attention, particularly in the online world, you are well acquainted with the multitude of discussions and research coming to light regarding the insane cost of childcare. As stated by the US Department of Labor blog, regardless of the area you live in, and I quote, prices are untenable for families in lower priced areas. Here is what their data shows. For the median annual price of US childcare for one child, infant-centered based, ranges from 7,461 to 15,417. Toddler center based ranges from 6,760 to 12,121. Preschool center based ranges from 6,239 to 11,050. And school age center based ranges from 5,288 to 9,199. The studies and research related to the source article is wild because despite of these expensive rates, they pay their staff such low wages, which in turn results in a very high turnover. In addition to issues like attracting sufficient workers, looking specifically to where I live in Texas, I looked at one of the more well-known and common childcare centers. Full-time monthly tuition charges as follows, for one child. Infant, 1400 to 1900 per month, which equates to 16,800 to 22,800 annually. Toddler is 1400 to 1800 per month, which equals to 16,800 to 21,600 annually. Preschool ranges from 1600 to $1,700 a month, which equals to $19,200 to $20,400 annually. And kindergarten ranges from $1,100 to $1,600 per month, which equals to $13,200 to $19,200 annually. And we of course can't leave out the summer camps, which are $300 per week. These costs also don't account for things like enrollment fees, annual registration fees, activities and supplies, uniforms, and late pickup, which by the way, ranges from a dollar to five dollars per minute you're late. It did state that some locations may offer a discount based on including multiple children, but at only 10% off the oldest child, that might as well just be a slap to the face. For example, let's say you have a infant and a toddler in childcare. Before the discount, you would be paying $33,600 to $44,400 annually. And a measly 10% discount would only save you between $1,680 to $2,160, which initially does look like a lot, but when the annual costs are so exponentially high, that 10% off barely makes a dent and you're still left paying between $31,920 to $41,240 a year. The difference between childcare in the suburbs versus city centers isn't off by much where we live, as we have family in the city center who annually pays $38,000 for two children to go to daycare. The hardest part about all of this, parents essentially pay to ensure that their kid's spot doesn't get taken, and what really could be considered the wild west of trying to find good, reliable childcare. We've sometimes seen it, heard it, or even witnessed our friends and family experience the thoughtless statements of, well, just stay home, or, just ask your family or friends to help out. But not everyone has the luxury to simply just stay home with children, let alone a sound support system of family and friends who are not only readily available, but also nearby. Those statements are far more easier said 
than done and completely lack the realization and understanding that people have very busy lives that they're caught up in outside of our own, but also that some people do require two incomes or simply enjoy working or having some form of goals, independence, and connection through their careers. Women also don't have to be mothers, and those who are mothers shouldn't be expected to give up everything they were as a person in the process and can instead continue to make life that is very much their own. If you don't want to stay home, you shouldn't be expected to, let alone forced, all because childcare has become such a huge expense. The option should remain open and readily available to everyone, based on what they aspire to achieve and have in their life. Additionally, just as similar as to how public education is funded through tax dollars, childcare should be the same or similar, without the occurrence of regular education cuts, of course. Better yet, if that's too much to ask, our government should be more than capable of providing far better subsidies towards childcare. And the more you start to think about it, the more strange it becomes when you realize that it's a little weird to have public education funded from kindergarten to grade 12, but not fund childcare, all while having high expectations for people to have children only to return to the workforce shortly after. If a multitude of other countries are capable of this sort of thing, knowing how important the quality and commitment to the early stages of a child's life are, then the US should be more than capable of providing such a thing. The financial impact of childcare is something that not only affects parents' decision-making within their own budgets and seeing where they could possibly cut corners, but is also a huge factor in why so many people are putting a pause on their plans to have children or are changing their minds altogether after coming to terms with the financial realities of what it takes to raise a child. Childcare costs alone can eat up most, if not all, of a family's annual earnings. And considering just how much general life expenses are, in addition to just the regular expenses that come with having children, things like having children or switching to a single income household just isn't an available choice to some. And not everyone has the luxury of a life where they can comfortably remain at home with the children while the other parent works. It's not as simple as just asking for a raise, a promotion, or looking for better career choices. I mean, millennials and Gen Z are said to be some of the most educated generations to date. And yet here we are, also considered the poorest. We have degrees in education that formally promised us high earning salaries. And while some of us did get lucky, others certainly didn't. And the hourly paid rates neither match the education level that that person has, let alone are wages keeping up with the current rates and expenses of things. If people are struggling to make ends meet on their own or even as a couple between making rent or mortgage payments, bills and groceries, the last thing they should really be doing and focusing on is digging a bigger hole by adding a child to the scenario. In today's world, children honestly really are considered a luxury item. Based on just how much money is required to ensure that both yourself and your child can be comfortably taken care of and have everyone's needs met. The thought of people out there having to spend thirty to $40,000 on childcare is just mind-boggling to me. Because as someone who is child-free, all I see is how far that money could go, whether it's towards a house, savings and investments, or if you have children, their education. In my eyes, Childcare these days is just essentially giving away free money because you don't really get anything in return for spending such a large lump sum of money. Sadly, and all too often, parents and mainly mothers are either forced to focus on career paths that offer greater flexibility, put their education and career on hold, or end it all together. This in turn can lead to several issues, including resume gaps, missing experience, less pay, and far fewer offers for job promotions. I personally know and have met various women in my life that hold completely different job titles to that of the degree that they have. Because positions, such as teaching, for example, offer greater flexibility considering the hours often align with their child's, as well as provide very similar holiday schedules. And in this case of working as a teacher, or any place in reality that could possibly have a childcare center attached to the building, like a gym, a parent could then have the possibility of discounted rates or at least the comfort of being nearby to not only check in here and there, but avoid those late fees. I focus on women within this issue because rarely ever do men's careers get affected by the choice of having children. Many women choose to be child-free because of the drive and focus that they have on their career and often want to remain locked in on their goals 
throughout the entire course of their life, without having to worry about the heavy burdens and assumptions placed on women within the workplace when it comes to the idea of them having children. And because of these issues, we are seeing the rise of women who want to eventually be mothers, choosing to wait longer and later in life to establish a family with children in order to build themselves up in their careers first, all while being able to maintain a sense of purpose outside of motherhood, as well as hold on to their identity and independence. Because babies and children do grow up, and sometimes marriages end. Sometimes I truly wonder if the people who are bragging about record profits within their companies don't see the correlation between raising the prices of things like childcare so exponentially high and the drop in individuals having children or having more than one child. It's already proven that societies do a whole lot better when people are paid well, can easily afford the basic necessities and sometimes more, and actually have the opportunity to thrive and excel. Honestly, more should be expected from a country that is so concerned with the business of a woman's uterus and so desperately wants every woman to have a multitude of children. But while society loves to tell you that it's our biological duty to procreate, they're all forgetting that species do adapt when conditions are far from favorable. And a country who would rather force individuals into parenthood rather than coming up with benefits and solutions that are in favor of their citizens and what they would need as people to even first consider the thought of having a child is, you guessed it, unfavorable. Survival always comes first. Based on everything we discussed, skyrocketing childcare is just the tip of the iceberg, especially when it comes to issues within the USA and the world overall as to why more and more people are choosing and just honestly relieved to be child free, but also as to why so many people are choosing to wait longer or just have less kids in general. There is no doubt, kids are expensive and in 2024 numbers, definitely a luxury. To be honest, it's pretty simple. If you can't afford it, don't buy it. And if you can't afford a child, don't have one. If you have anything more you would like to add to this topic, as well as any additional thoughts you have on today's video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more, make sure to like and subscribe to stay posted. And as always, keep being authentically child-free.